It has shaped our lives and it's set to have an ever greater impact as we strive towards a greener future. Academics still argue over a concrete definition of what electricity really is. Traditionally, electricity supply is a vertically integrated system, often a monopoly, generating at the plant, transmitting over power lines and distributed to homes and businesses for use. But modern technology and market changes are swiftly disrupting this traditional role, causing both challenges and opportunities in the energy market. And electricity generation remains at the core of our efforts to reduce carbon dioxide emissions, as scientists and engineers look to incorporate renewables into the energy mix. Afia, what have we got? We travel to a fossil fuel mine to find a sustainable energy solution. Then strapping into a shocking method of transport and seeing how microgrids are creating a buzz in India. Lastly, we visit Europe's largest port to see how they keep the power on when the worst happens. If, like me, you find electricity all a bit baffling, then fear not, because we travel to the Netherlands to meet Professor Peter Polensky. He's a specialist in intelligent electrical grids and efficiency. But first, are we using more or less electricity? It's estimated that the world's net electricity generation will increase 69% by 2040, from 21.6 trillion kilowatt hours to 36.5 trillion. Electricity can be generated from a wide variety of traditional fuels, such as oil, natural gas and nuclear power. But coal has continued to be the most widely used, accounting for around 40% of production. Renewables are still a small percentage of that fuel mix, but are the fastest growing source of electricity generation, providing 22% of world electricity in 2012 and estimated to grow to 29% by 2040. The key problem with sustainable energy in general and electricity's role in it has been storage. Until recently, few storage solutions looked realistic, but things are beginning to change. We travel to Germany, where they are thinking radical. Use of renewables in Germany has been a success story, with the country being described as the world's first major renewable economy. And in the first half of 2017, it was reported that wind, hydro and solar power share in the country's electricity mix climbed to a record 35% in the first half of the year. But it still stubbornly relies on coal to provide its peak load. The so-called Energiewende in Germany is an energy transition process towards renewable energies. But in order to have a reliable energy supply, we are in the need for classical, for example, coal power plants uh, to assure the energy supply. For renewables to compete with coal, storage is the key issue. Grids need a flexible, large store of energy that can be turned on just when it's needed. The mining company ERG has been working with various universities, including the University of Deutschberg Essen, to come up with a pretty novel concept. They hope to solve this storage issue by turning a coal mine into a pump storage system. The basic idea is a classical pump storage scheme. You have a, an upper reservoir and a lower reservoir. The upper reservoir is built on the existing mining infrastructure. The lower reservoir is built more than 500 meters deep in the rock. And in times of energy need, you are just turbine the water towards the lower reservoir and in uh, case you are, have an over excess of energy in the grid, you're taking this energy from the grid in order to recharge the battery to refill the upper reservoir. And getting a coal producing company involved in a renewable energy concept seems something unique too. But then there is a big incentive, as Germany is ending subsidies to coal mines in 2018, so the mining companies are having to rethink their business models too. We thought about what we can do with all the infrastructural things we had in, in the mines, and uh, we thought about wind energy, uh, we thought about sun energy on the uh, mine plants, and also uh, for, for the pump storage uh, systems. The mine Prosper Haniel in Boltrop has operated for around 150 years and has produced more than 300 million tonnes of coal, but that could be soon to change. The mine is slated to close next year and expected to become a pumped storage hydroelectric reservoir. 
So we investigated a number of facilities suitable for this site and we come to the conclusion that a 200 megawatt capacity plant would be suitable for this geology at this site. And uh, we will provide uh, an amount of 808 megawatt hours. This means that we are able to supply 400,000 households with this facility each cycle. It's an ambitious project that could provide a cleaner way to store energy, but it remains to see if those involved can raise the funding to make the scheme a reality. Peter Polensky is Professor for Intelligent Electric Power Grids at the Technical University of Delft in the Netherlands. He was the principal scientist on complex energy systems at the Austrian Institute of Technology in Vienna. He was researcher at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in California in the United States and an entrepreneur in energy management in Hamburg, Germany. Peter, thank you for having us here at Delft University of Technology. We're in the high voltage lab. Now, what actually happens here? We do research and experiments on high voltage power system technology. Now, thinking about electricity, obviously it's been incredibly important to civilization over the last hundred years or so. Can you quantify how important? Well, electricity is the backbone of our society. Health, transport, food, information, all of that relies on electricity nowadays. That's the past. Thinking about the future and the new energy revolution, is electricity still going to remain as important? Absolutely. We will have all the transport based on electricity and all the consumer electronics as well. Now, when we think about consumer electronics and when we think about sustainable energy, we've talked during this series a lot about storage. Uh, and that seems to me to be a key to electricity and to the future of electricity too. Absolutely. We need storage to host all the renewables. In the past, the storage was not needed. Generation was reliable, you switch it on, it runs forever. Now we are phasing out of that, we are replacing it with fluctuating energy sources and now we have to store. And when we think about storage, we think mainly about batteries, but how much can batteries actually store and can it cope with industry's needs for large amounts of power very fast? Um, the magnitude of the storage is really important to look at. If you look at batteries, you have hundreds of kilowatt hours that you can store. If you go utility scale with these batteries, you might have megawatt hours, you know, if you take 10 or hundreds of them. But to supply a country for a week or two of no wind and little sun, you need terawatt hours. That's a thousand times, a thousand times more than we can do with batteries. And so is that still quite challenging for the industry then? Um, there are technologies that can cope with that, but we don't store in batteries anymore, we store in molecules, in hydrogen, in gases, in fuels. Now some people ask, why can't electricity be recycled? Mm -hmm. The full recycle would be if we would turn the product that electricity was used for, maybe heat or mechanical engineering, again into electricity. And the laws of thermodynamics, unfortunately, don't allow this in this universe. <laughs> so it's a good answer. It's physics. That's why it can't happen. You can't fool <laughs> physics, unfortunately. <laughs> Lots more to come from Peter in the rest of the program. But first, let's dispel one common misconception. You thought you knew? Think again. Myth. Renewable electricity generation is just as harmful to the environment as fossil fuel sources. Fact. The story goes that it's just as bad for the environment to create, transport, run and dismantle a renewable power source as it is to just use a fossil fuel such as coal. But the life cycle argument as it's known doesn't ring true. Sure, manufacturing renewable technology isn't emissions free, but fossil fuels produce between 14 and 134 times more emissions than renewables. Electric trains, electric trams and now the rise of electric cars. Electricity has always played a vital part in transportation and now its role is only set to grow. We travel to Germany to see a novel way in which it might be powering us from A to B. The whole world was wowed by the efforts of the Solar Impulse team to fly around the world on a solar powered plane. But there are a lot of practical problems in powering an aircraft with electricity. Something they know a lot about at the Institute of Aircraft Design at Stuttgart University. In setting up a full electric uh, uh, propulsion chain, first of all we had to identify all components that, that could possibly uh, be arranged for such a chain. And then uh, in integrating them really on an aircraft, you find new problems like electromagnetic interference or weight distribution, which you have to change center of gravities. 
Here at the Institute, the scientists and students have been battling with such issues for a long time. One goal of the aircraft was to reduce energy consumption um, so we need about 10 times less energy to fly the aircraft compared to a conventional aircraft. The students and staff here have been working on a powered glider concept called the E-Genius, which explores the balance between weight and efficiency. Oh, the E-Genius is a, is a full electric battery-powered aeroplane uh, with a max take-off mass of 900 kilograms, can, can uh, carry two pilots on board uh, over a distance of 400 kilometers. Its success is down to its design. In uh, contrast to fuel-powered airplanes, the mass of energy doesn't diminish during flight, so we have to choose the, the right value. And so for this 900 kilograms takeoff mass, we had chosen a battery mass of 270 kilograms. All this makes it a highly efficient aircraft that can really go places. We have a range of 400 kilometers with the Eugenius, including uh, 30 minutes reserve and to fly these 400 kilometers we need about 40 kilowatt hours therefore the energy cost is about 20 euros for this flight. The team here are looking at innovative ways to increase that range again. First we had designed a so-called range extender so a small hybridization a small bunkle engine that would bring us up to a thousand kilometers range but now we go for a so-called high performance hybrid that means we have a, a smart diesel engine with this we can dramatically increase the range so the skies may be becoming like the roads with a mixture of pure electric and hybrid systems but what is it like to fly so it behaves like a conventional airplane and the flight performance is also comparable to conventional airplanes therefore it's quite fun and of course it's uh, less noisy inside the cockpit. One of the key cornerstones and tests of the technology was a return flight over the Alps in 2015. It was the first flight which shows it's really feasible, this aircraft. So we flew to Italy, uh, eat lunch and flew back. That's uh, quite like a normal airplane. Whether hybrid or pure electricity, it seems the team here think electrical power in aviation is here to stay, but they are not resting on their laurels yet. So our next step with the Genius is the Genius High Performance Hybrid, so to show that we really can have this range extension and still have dramatic uh, improvements in fuel consumption. We say it should be more than 40% for this Genius configuration. So it seems electrical power planes may soon not just be the exception, but could one day become the norm. Watch this space. Peter, starting to think about the transport industry, can you explain to us the role of electricity and how it's developing and where we are right now? We have public transport pretty much covered. Trains, tramways, now we have buses, trucks, bicycles, cars, scooters coming up and in the end also aviation. And what are the big issues then as we look forward within transportation? Storage. You have to carry your package with you unless you're a trolley bus. That's true. When we think about transportation and we think about aeroplanes, everybody's talking about the electric passenger plane. Is it possible and how long do we have to wait? I think it's possible. We have now lightweight, um, ultralight aeroplanes, experimental ones from NASA. Um, on the city to city trip, London, Amsterdam, it might be reality in the not so distant future. On the long haul, it might be a bit further down, down the road. Still a long way to wait for that then. When we think about efficiency in particular and increasing demand or reducing demand, how can we increase efficiency? Well, there are basically three ways to improve efficiency. Either you work on the what, on the materials, the machines, you replace it with something better. Then you use less energy for the same purpose, for the same service. The second strategy is the how, the controls. You might change the way how you use it, maybe earlier, maybe later, and you can avoid peak loads. And the third strategy is thinking out of the box. Yeah, the why, why are you doing it in the first place? Maybe you can question the entire purpose and change something in that respect. The cost of moving to renewables from traditional uh, electricity generation is very high. Who pays that cost? Is it being passed down to the consumers? It's not costing a lot, it's saving our lives. <laughs> that's true. In, in the big scheme of things, that's true, of course, but financially, there's a huge cost to investment. It's always the consumer that pays. The consumer also pays the subsidies for nuclear and for coal. I believe we should even invest more into green technology. The race is fast and we have to be quick to catch up. And who do you believe should pay for it? In the end, it's the consumer, of course. Coming up after the break, a first in India and a switch that could save a small piece of our frustration and also save lives. 
still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.